This is Defenders TV Podcast, episode 62, where we're talking about Captain America Civil War in our spoiler-free review. Welcome back, Defenders. Yes, you've heard it right. We are going to be talking about Captain America Civil War, but it will be spoiler free on this episode. Uh, we will be doing our spoiler filled podcast very soon. Uh, I'm one of your hosts, Derek. I'm your other host, Chris. Welcome back, Chris. Thank you. Unfortunately, John isn't here, and here poses the problem. Uh, I went to see the preview of Captain America Civil War this week, and unfortunately, neither of my fellow podcasters were able to join me. So we get to grill him. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. But I will be talking completely spoiler-free, because number one, I don't want to spoil my co-hosts, because uh, I want them to see the movie and make sure they enjoy it as much as I did. Yes, there's my first little bit. Yes, I did enjoy it. Uh, and secondly, I don't want to spoil any of the listeners. So you feel free to listen to this episode. Uh, get excited for the movie. And uh, hopefully I'll answer some very spoiler-free questions uh, about the movie, some of the things you might have before you go into it. Uh, first off, I want to say a huge thank you to Disney Movies Ireland for uh, inviting us along to the premiere. Uh, really good of them to have us along. And um, we really, really enjoyed the night. Number, number, number one for me, seeing a movie as a preview filled full of content comic book fans and Marvel fans and Captain America and Iron Man fans who were who were battling it out for uh, for which one they loved more. Um, yeah, really, really enjoyable. Definitely one of, one of my favorite experiences. The one thing I will just add is we will, in terms of spoilers, mm -hmm. if you are on a full trailer blackout, then we will be probably discussing maybe certain elements of the trailers. So I'm going to go up to not the TV spots, but I'll go up to the international trailers. Okay, good point. And that is my first uh, thing to say to anybody who is about to just switch off right now. Don't watch any more trailers before you see the movie. Uh, there are some out there that uh, you shouldn't be watching if you want to enjoy and get the full experience of the movie. So uh, don't watch any more. No, and I, look, I'm, I'm even coming into this on this one as well. So my feeds on Twitter and Facebook and my God, even just uh, Flipboard, which mm -hmm. is a news app that I use is since they started launching the TV spots, mm -hmm. my God, they're like literally, oh, Spider-Man does this and oh, this. I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm, it's hurt. It's like, I'm just scrolling normally, da, 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 like normal baby, baby, picture, picture, baby, picture, boyfriend, <laughs> girlfriend, yada, 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 politics, which is just usual feed mess. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, boom, boom, I'm like, I hate, I hate you. <laughs> like, Unfriend immediately, once, Chris. Well, no, Unfriend immediately. Once, this is actually an annoyance to me. So even comicbook.com, which is typically a very reputable, reputable site, mm -hmm. and they and I, I really enjoy their content. They posted a very spoilerific article, and not even so. I didn't even the headline spoilery, and the worst part is as soon as I saw the image is spoilery. The image attached to the article that was posted through the feed right. is spoilery. And I'm like, there was no spoiler warning. It basically what's happening now, and I think this is this is the downside, I think, which I was hoping Marvel, because they're typically good at this. Mm -hmm. Oh, so for Cap, we've had three trailers, so a teaser and two trailers mm -hmm. for Civil War. Now they're doing all the TV spots, which I was hoping they wouldn't do to the level that they are, but they're doing character promo type TV spots. Yeah, yeah. And that's where we start getting all these horrible spoiler parts because they're trying to fill in with uh, another 15 seconds of new footage. Uh, just so that thing, obviously, they're trying to keep the press, the marketing, mm -hmm. the marketing role going. Uh, and this is the problem I had with Batley Soups, Dog right. Justice. Right. Like, in my opinion, and I. I I didn't love the film. I liked the film a lot. I wouldn't mm -hmm. go sorry to say this is like, that was a, it was amazing, but it was really good. It had lots of faults, but it was still good. Yes. Um, they spoiled a lot of the amazing moments mm -hmm. in the trailers or, and these TV spots that started coming and then the, in their cross advertising. Mm -hmm. So well, this is where I think Deadpool did it really well. Mm -hmm. Deadpool, put out TV spots and trailers, but they they didn't, they they filmed new footage for it. 
Right, yes, yes. So it was funny new footage just to keep that pr- promotional marketing spin life going. And they did that well. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And this is the thing. So I, if you are listening to this and we are recording the week the week prior to the European release, the week of the European release, I should say. Yeah, 27th of April, the yeah. uh, two days before release yeah. over here. Go off Facebook. Go yeah. off feeds. <laughs> Things will be... As soon as this well, hits... Uh, uh, no, as soon as this me, hits... Now, let me address this, because okay. I think it's important, having seen the film. Okay. <laughs> don't worry too much about it. There's so much goodness in this film. There's, it's a long film. Uh, don't feel any of the length of it. Some of the some of the little bits that are out there, some of the bits that I've seen uh, now that I've started watching the trailers again after the movie um, to get myself re-excited to go and see it again. Um, there are little spoilers, but there are some f- other fantastic things in this film to uh, to get you excited. So don't worry too much. None of the big uh, big plot points have been spoiled uh, in any trailer or TV spot that I've seen. Um, I think most people will understand the general gist of the film uh, before they go and see it. So uh, none of that needs to be kept under wraps. I think people understand it is Civil War. So let me get, so this is when Captain America and Iron Man go back in time to the Civil War of of the United States and fight one on the Confederates and one on the Union. Exactly. That's why the X-Men are in it. Okay, just checking it. (laughs) So at least I know the plot. There you go. There you go. Uh, but overall, yeah, I think uh, I think there's some some great stuff in here. I think uh, Chris, you asked me a couple of questions about it last night after I came out of the cinema. Before we go into the questions, I I, I literally want your sixty second view now. Just your thoughts, your guttural your guttural feeling as you walked out of that movie theater. I wanted to walk right back in. Uh, and it's something I generally do after going to see a premiere on the night of the night of of release film. So if I go and see it on a Friday night, I generally actually will go back a second time over the weekend if I've enjoyed the film. The one crappy thing about going to see a premiere is, oh, OK, I can't go back to see that uh, for another couple of days. Uh, and then I have to like book it in advance because everybody else wants to see it, obviously. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's my that's my absolute feeling is. Wow. Okay, they did a great job here. I want to go see that again. Want to see Cap again. Want to see Iron Man again. Um, want to see the next film. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's setting up a lot. It's it's uh, includes a lot, and uh, yeah, really excited to see it again. I must admit, uh, that's my that's my overall takeaway. They did a good job. Good. No, and that's the, that. So yeah, if you didn't come out feeling hurt, then that's a good sign. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go into some of my questions, and then we do have some of our listeners' questions once you said that you'd watch it. So I'm going to kind of mesh these in. And we're going mm-hmm. to try and keep it, as we said, this is non-spoilery. So we're going to stay away from anything that potentially could spoil parts of it. Like, exactly. And I think, I think that's probably the best way of saying it. Exactly, exactly. So the question that probably everyone wants to know. And let's be honest about this. Mm-hmm. Uh, Spidey, Tom Hollard, come on, come on, just, just, just as much as you can. We okay. know we. And so it's it's been known, and it's or I believe it was one of the Russo brothers said that there was about a thirty minutes. He was in there for around thirty minutes. That was confirmed by the original press tra- uh, press screenings about two to three weeks ago. So we, okay. I know we have thirty minutes. Yeah, because I, I was seeing uh, a lot of stuff going around saying he's in it for two scenes. He's not in there for long at all. He's in there just the right amount. Um, this is not an Avengers film. This is not Spidey's film. Definitely. Uh, I've been hearing a lot of people say things like um, he owns the film. If he wasn't there, then it wouldn't be great. Uh, this is everyone's film, um, but it is a Captain America film above and beyond everything else. But quickly, to answer your question, uh, Spidey Tom Holland is a great Peter Parker because we do get to see Peter Parker. Oh. Uh, he's a good Spider-Man too. He's a great Spider-Man. Uh, and he has a good amount to do in the film. There's some really good, fun stuff in there uh, that I think Spider-Man fans particularly have been looking forward to. Uh, and they're going to enjoy this one. Excellent. Definitely. Excellent. Um, one question I had, and this is arose from... Um, actually, this arose from the X-Men Apocalypse. So I was seeing, basically, we also got a trailer drop of X-Men Apocalypse this this week. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the feedback I've been hearing about that from the interwebs is CGI. Uh Uh-huh. 
overly CGI. The Russo brothers it, it, with Winter Soldier, I felt mm-hmm. got a nice balance, especially. And I, I think it, it, aside from one or two bits where they couldn't build a heli carrier and crash it into outside of Washington DC, which is a fair thing to say. Yeah. What, yeah. what are we like here? How, how's the the? Is there some of the over the top CGI moments, or are we? Is it balanced? Is it well there with their directing style? I, I definitely think again. To stress it, this is a Captain America film. This is very grounded. In fact, uh, probably a lot of Tony in this film, um, and a lot of a lot of Steve Rogers, obviously, uh, a lot of the other characters that are uh, non-powered as such, I suppose, or non non CGI powered, yeah. um, are in it a lot. So uh, this is very grounded. It's not a huge talky film or anything like that. Don't want to undersell the the fight scenes, but when the fight scenes come, there is CGI. There's mix of live action fights there's actually two fights in there that really reminded me of daredevil fights uh to the point where i was wondering whether the stunt coordinator for daredevil was involved in the film um he was involved in civil war uh, as well but there's really kind of visceral battles at times and there's also the uh, the fantastical uh marvel fights that we've come to know and love with some proper cgi some stuff that's it's almost ready for gifting uh on the screen when you're watching it the the kind of kind of slow-mo stop uh, cut for three or four seconds so you can really appreciate a proper punch uh, that you can just gif out of your uh, of your Blu-ray <laughs> when you get it and, and post it on Twitter. That is ready for that as well. Um, yeah, CGI is uh, is definitely used. There's a number of characters in there that are uh, that probably wouldn't be able to be on screen without it. Um, so uh, yeah, definitely used, but not overused and done pretty well for me. Excellent, cool. So this was also one of my questions, but uh, we also got this from one of our listeners as well. We came over on Defenders TV podcast in our group. So mm-hmm. if you if you're not following or join the group, come on in. You can get questions on air. Yes, hint hint, come wink o- wink. Yes, come uh, over to uh, come over to facebook.com slash groups slash Defenders TV podcast. There you go. So, um, in your point of view. Mm-hmm. Does this solidify your co- confidence with the Russo brothers now directing the Affinity, the Affinity Wars? Oh, that's an interesting question, I think. Because um, I don't know what Affinity War is going to be like. I think Affinity War is going to be much more um, much more out there as a film. Uh, I think there's going to be, I understand, there's going to be bringing in some of the more uh, space characters. Possibly Gar- Guardians of the Galaxy could be coming in. Possibly Doctor Strange coming in. Uh, what I love about the Russos particularly is how they've handled Captain America and his storyline and the, the characters that have surrounded him. They do it again here. They've done a great job. What I do trust... And what I have confidence in is Marvel. Once again, they haven't let us down here. So they've chosen Anthony and Joe Russo to do Infinity War. They've done a really good job on Civil War. I, I think they could pull it off. Um, they do the character stuff really well, which is the thing that grounds the movies. Um, and if they can keep doing that and keep bringing in good special effects artists to do the special effects that people love so much, then yeah, all power to them. I'm, I'd be really excited to see what they do, what their take is on the Infinity War. Excellent. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Um, now, this is, I'm going to ask this, but okay. I, I do not want any details. Okay. The post credit scene. So, mm. it, did they go down the route of Donald Justice? Which, none. Did they do one, two, four, eight? Give me, without giving me details. Yes. Am I going to enjoy it? Okay. Uh, what I saw was there was one post credit scene. Okay. It's integral. You must stay for it. Okay. Um, what I feel is that there will be a second post credit scene when this is released Excellent. on Friday. So the reason I say that is because the screen that we were at showed two trailers before it. One was for Rogue One, obviously a Disney film. The second was for Doctor Strange, which I got to see the big screen and looked even cooler on the big screen, I must admit. Uh, and John will be very excited to see it when, nah. he, uh, when he gets to see it. And then it went straight into a cold open into the film. Um, so no, no, um, what do you call them? Racing cards, no other trailers, no adverts, nothing like Ooh. that. And then, uh, to the end of the movie. So I feel this is the press print. And in the past, Marvel have been known to do the press print from everything all the way back to Avengers, as far as I remember. Yep. They did the press print. And then when it was released in the cinema a couple of weeks later. So. I presume, I feel, they're probably going to do a teaser or some form of post credit scene uh, that I haven't seen. But I'll be looking forward to see before we have our review of uh, of Captain America Civil War. But I will also say fair dues to the cinema where we watched the movie because what they kept doing was turning off and on the lights after uh, after the final credits. 
to just get people excited to see another post credit scene that wasn't going to play. So they were uh, having a little bit of fun with the Marvel audience. Uh, there, weren't that, there weren't that many people that left before the uh, before the final final credit rolled. So my God, who would leave? I know. It's a known thing now. Absolutely, especially in that crowd, who, who they were. They were the weirdos that time. <laughs> um, time wise. We've been told again by one of our listeners mm-hmm. uh, that they added an extra 20 minutes in uh, before they actually even finished the print. Mm-hmm. So how are we feeling? that's just called editing, isn't it? Yeah. I, I, that's what, <laughs> that's what, no offense, uh, but yeah, I would. I, I, I So we actually had this conversation very quickly off air because we saw this the feedback. So yeah, so they added 20 minutes in before we went into press screening. That's editing for me. That's yeah. post production. Yeah. If they were to add more, which, like in the say, once it goes to Blu-ray and they do similar to Star Wars, they add extra time in. Or so now we're also with the Buffy soups. We're gonna get the R-rated version and an extra thirty minutes, I believe. Uh, that's ec- that's extra time. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll call this editing more, right? So yeah. So they edited from they pre post edited if we want to call that extra cuts in right. what's the one time like how does it feel is it a bit drawn out because what i felt with winter soldier mm-hmm. it it was bang on the mark there was none yes. of the they didn't they gave you lulls but they gave you lulls at the right time and then you gave action 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 and then a lull but those lulls were integral character building parts are they the yeah, same here? The, the, the story parts. Yeah, yes, the story um, parts. <laughs> <laughs> between the punchy punchy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of punchy punchy in this film. Um, the the fight scenes themselves are epics. Um, better, better, I will say it, definitely better than the fight scenes in Age of Ultron. Um, the, the, some of the other scenes are, the fight scenes are even better than the ones that we saw in Civil War. Um, great for the fight scenes. Then we have all the characters that they're trying to manage, right? Big tip for you. All the characters that they say, oh, why didn't they include this character in the movie? Why didn't they include that character in the movie? I've heard a great comment from the Russo brothers where they said, uh, we didn't include anybody that we that we wanted to do for stunt reasons just to just to promote the film even more. We didn't stick in the Hulk or whatever the, the quote was. Um, Every single character is used very well. They've all got something to do. They've all got a little bit of a backstory or something that they were taking away from uh, from the last Avengers film or their own personal films they were in. They've all got something of that. And this movie either pushes them towards their next film or includes them really centrally in the, in the movie itself. So, um, so all those people that are that are worried about uh, about some of their favorite characters not appearing, don't worry, they'll be back in another film. They just may may not have belonged in this. All the characters that are in this film are handled really well, and I think that probably speaks to the runtime. Uh, everybody's given a really good chunky scene. Some characters that um, I was kind of surprised getting some really meaty moments in the film and i'm really looking forward to talking talking to you guys about them uh, as well chris um i'm really i'd like to see your opinion on some of the characters who get some some chunkier scenes and some kind of um some interesting dialogue that probably would have been cut out if they didn't have the runtime left available to them wow okay mm. yeah mm. some really interesting stuff in there and did, did they explain why the hulk and thor or not, or, and some of these other characters who we, we kind of expect to be in it, do they explain why they're not there, or is it kind of just left in the ether? Um, as with every Marvel film, uh, there is a mention. Okay. Um, so I'm not definitely not going to spoil no. anything about that, but there's there's definitely a mention in there and a very realistic take on this Civil War here. Remember, the, this, the Civil War books were across... What, 122 issues of a comic book taking in every single character across all the comic comic books, major and minor. And this is a Captain America film, uh, with a very sizable guest appearance from Tony Stark. Um, but it is still Cap America's film. So it's taken the Civil War storyline from the point of view of Captain America and Tony Stark. So, um, I think all the other characters that join in around them get something to do and something pretty sizable, each of them. Um, but you couldn't really push in any more. I wouldn't want to see an extra hour just to shoehorn in, um, I don't know, Squirrel Girl. Um, <laughs> oh my you know. God, that would be amazing. <laughs> I know it would, but I still wouldn't want to see an extra hour just to shoehorn her in. No, um, come on, but, you would, you would. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Just, <laughs> just actually that character. I'd be like, okay, I'll take it, yeah. I, I will sit here for another 20 minutes of Squirrel Girl discussing board game tactics. 
yeah, I could do that. <laughs> there you go. There you go. But overall, um, that's my general thoughts on the movie. Anything else from you, Chris? Any other questions? Yeah. So no, I want to because we're. I, I want to keep this relatively short because we're obviously we know our spoiler filled review when we myself and John have seen it and we we sit down. You see it for your second time. That's uh-huh. gonna, that's going to be a long one. So yep. and I know this this. There's been hints that, uh, again, through press um, of stuff that I, I'm very interested in, but I want to hold off those because they may be spoilery. Okay. Um, so I think I want to close it with this. You you have, you have are a very big S.H.I.E.L.D. fan. Yes, I am. So taking that out of perspective, right, and placing mm-hmm. this into ver- MCU, so we'll take it, say, your top MCU and then your top superhero overall films. Give me a, give me, a, where are we ranking here? Is, is this, is this a, you must see on opening night? This is, you must see, my God, if you haven't seen this within 24 hours, you, what are you doing? And um, where, give me, give me some, give me some figures here. Okay. So I think we talked about it on one of our recent podcasts. So we rated the kind of 12 MCU movies. Uh, I think it was around our, our Ant-Man kind of time. Yeah. Um, so let's put it this way. Captain America is my favorite set of uh, trilogy uh, at the moment. Okay. Um, I absolutely adored the first Avenger because it was so, it was so like Nick Fury's movie is what it felt like, <laughs> uh, except Captain America was taking the part of Nick Fury. Um, then I love Winter Soldier because, oh, wow, what a, an amazing film. Absolutely brilliant film. An excellent, different take for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, this is up there. This is like, you know, there's this. It, it, we might have just reversed the order of um, of Captain wow. America films. Might have moved. I still probably for the moment, because I've seen it so many times, I still say Winter Soldier is my favorite MCU film. Yeah. This is coming in pretty close to number two right now. OK, that's a that's a glowing endorsement. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, I think that's where I'm sitting right now. Let me see it again. And I'll uh, I'll probably give an opinion as to whether I fully defend this film or not. But right now, get out there, go see it this weekend. I saw it in two D. I want to see three D IMAX. There's some uh, some glorious glorious scenes to watch in this film, uh, and really looking forward to seeing it again. So um, yeah, so for the moment, I would say definitely top five, and yeah, just in there behind uh, Winter Soldier right now for me. Uh, this is the continuation of that story, and that's a great story. So excellent. Okay, well that's that's a glowing endorsement from one of our defenders who we hate slightly <laughs> for getting to see it before us. Um, I'll, obviously, if John was here as well, I think we would be doing... Right now, it's a civil war because mm-hmm. I hate him for having that. This is my Sarkovia ad- Accords. I wish we were doing this in, in video. Chris is wearing red, I'm wearing blue. Yep. Just, it looks like it looks like uh, Captain America Civil I, War. I, I, I'm, I'm Team Iron Man all the way, peeps. I'm, oh. oh, I'm sorry. Give me Tony Stark over your puny Steve Rogers mm-hmm. any day. Um, but I know, unfortunately, because Cap's the good boy, the golden boy, the pretty boy, he's always going to get more fans on Team Cap. But give me Iron Man. I think everybody's going to have an interesting opinion after this movie comes out. Um, yes! <laughs> about that question, that that uh, what side are you on? And that's that's all I was hoping for from this film was to give me a perspective on on Iron Man that I hadn't had before in the films that I've watched, um, and it really did. Yeah, it's got a, got got some really good stuff, Excellent. good things to talk about. So so. There you have it, listeners, coming to you <laughs> before the release. Our spoiler less a preview of uh, well Derek's preview of <laughs> uh, Captain America: Civil War. Um, we're going to be Absolutely. back very soon. With obviously our regular scheduled programming, mm-hmm. but anything, Derek, you want to close off just to tell our listeners before we end this preview? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. One huge thing: make sure you subscribe to us over at defenderstvpodcast.com/slash iTunes. That way, you'll get the uh, the full spoiler filled discussion about Captain America: Civil War when we release it. Hopefully next week, um, we'll also get all of our episodes about Daredevil. Um, Jessica Jones, Age of Carter, uh, all of our movies that we've done before, Age of Ultron, Ant-Man, Deadpool, 
and fan four stick. Um, so yeah, you'll get to see all the sides of, uh, of the Marvel Cinematic Universe if you just subscribe to us over there. If you're not an iTunes person and not an Apple person, uh, you can subscribe on any other good podcast catcher. Just search for Defenders TV Podcast on any podcast catcher like Beyond Pod, Podcast Addict, and hopefully Google Play Music soon. Very soon. Excellent. And if you want to send in your feedback once you've seen the film, just make sure you email us at feedback at DefendersTVPodcast.com or join the group over on Facebook. Just come join us at Facebook.com slash groups slash Defenders TV Podcast. And don't forget, you can also find us on Twitter at DefendersCast. That's it for this episode. We'll be back with our regularly scheduled Daredevil episode, which is episode eight of season two uh, on our next episode, hopefully to release tomorrow. So looking forward to that one. Thanks very much for joining us, Team Cap. Team Iron Man. (laughs) Peace out.